it's so good to see you. Thank you. So great to be here. For those of you who have not seen Boss yet, you should be watching. You should be watching every week. Uh, it's my new executive thought leadership series on LinkedIn, where I interview my badass executive network to help others learn, network, and pay it forward in this crazy new normal that is 2020. First and foremost, I am a mother and wife mm -hmm. um, to two lovely daughters, uh, 16 and 20, and uh, my husband of 23 years. I like to consider myself um, a leader who stands for people someone who really considers um, people's full lives. I, I, I want everyone I work with to be able to bring them full selves to work. And what's really interesting is that during COVID, um, you know, here we are all bringing our full selves to work, right? And it's been something that as a 20 year working mother, I have been championing for through the years and nothing makes me happier than to see that, yes, we can work from home and still do our jobs and be professionals. And while I miss the office so much and, and interacting with people face to face, um, I think that having the balance of not having to commute every single day and also saying hello to your kids after school or you know, in between the day, there, there's just something that really is nice about being able to bring both worlds together. Really hope that after COVID that we can continue this and I will stand for that. I'm also a diversity champion. I've been um, a diversity champion for, for every company I've been. Um, when we worked together at Viacom, Judy McGrath, our CEO at the time, she had me on her diversity board and it was something that I truly loved, um, representing diversity of, of all, of everything, of age, gender, race, sex, um, and really seeing from a very young age in my career how when you have a diverse room full of people, different ideas, um, you know, different ways of thinking, and that are really open to one another, such great things can happen and you can achieve incredible business results. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I champion that. I, I do that at NBCU as well. And it's something that during this time that I'm, I'm proud that it's been in the foundation of who I am my whole career. We've known each other for a while. We've, we've been able to keep in touch through, uh, you know, seeing each other at CES, seeing each other at an Equality Lab. Networking is critically important. I think it gives you an opportunity to um, learn about people in a, in a different setting than, than a formal business meeting. A lot of times relationships can really make the difference in business because it's built on trust. And when you network with people and get to know them through the years, you build a certain level of trust. It builds uh, a network of champions. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you and I, like you said, we worked together years ago, but have been each other's champions throughout business. So when someone mentions, oh, Allie Levitin, it's like, oh, I love Allie. She's so great. She's done so many great things in our industry. And I've heard the same back that you would say for me. And I think having champions of people, and you mentioned the Equality Lounge, such a great place to network with people who stand for equality and inclusion. Oftentimes, when I'm looking for someone for a new position, I can bring someone you know, in. Um, right now, I had been met some people who were CEOs, um, black men who are running content distribution companies. I've, I've been networking with them. And our company, Comcast, had made um, a commitment to investing in companies owned by people of color and was able to bring them in, get, you know, get them a meeting. I think that's really great. Young people who I network with from all over, they may see me speak at something, they'll come up to me, send me an email. I'm so happy to learn about their careers and to help them, you know, get a foot in the door. I would see her where through the A and A, a lot of the, the different champions for CEO, her different CMOs, we've been able to work together to create different things across NBCU. So the People's Choice Awards, we did a See Her Award. 
today's show has a city concert series where we often do see her, hear her concerts. So it's been a real incredible opportunity then to see commerce grow from relationships. And as you can tell, I do, I love purpose driven. It, it, it really is my passion and it, it has been since the beginning. And I think it's because leaving my children to work for 80 hours a week, I commute three to four, well, right now I don't, but I was commuting three to four hours a day for 20 years. When I am working with two incredibly talented people on a job, I often look, how is this person's attitude towards their work, towards life? And the person who tends to be glass half full, solution oriented, coming from what's possible, to me, that's the person I wanna work with. And we're seeing that now with people who are graduating. There are those who are, are you know, and I, and I understand there is a lot of fear, but coming at it from fear versus this is a great opportunity because the young people today, they know so much about social and interacting with media in a completely different way than my generation. Come to the table, to your interview with what what can you bring to the company that is unique? Every answer to your interview question should be giving examples of how you can, can contribute to this company in a unique way, using examples of things you've done. When we worked together at Viacom, yes, I was a vice president looking to get promoted to an SVP, which ultimately I did when we worked together at VH1. Mm -hmm. But I didn't approach it by just interviewing for SVP jobs that were available. I actually took time to meet with the leadership mm -hmm. and I had ideas of how to evolve and grow our business. And I see this with the superstars on my team today. The world need, needs more women and diversity in tech roles, data roles, leadership, marketing roles. The Global 500 list came out and according to Fortune, women run just 13 out of 500 of the companies that made the cut. There are no women of color on that list. Oh, this is really, really a tough one. I mean, I think, I think some of it has to do with choice because what Shelly Zalas um, from TFQ calls the messy middle, it's when women have to make the choice between family and career. And it was that lack of flexibility. And it's one of the reasons why I committed myself. I was fortunate that my, I had the setup between my, my parents and my in-laws and I, we've had the same nanny for 20 years and my husband, um, he chose to stop working in corporate America at some point because my career kept advancing and it was like two of us in corporate America. So I had this unbelievable, as Hillary Clinton said, village to help, um, but a lot of women don't. And so they have to make a choice. And so as, as, as employers, we need to really honor people for what they bring to the table, not when they bring it and if they're doing it in an office, right? So this new level of flexibility, I think that COVID is going to bring forward, I think will help more authentic leadership from CEOs like our CEO, Jeff Shell, who I, I love, he puts his money where his mouth is, his vice chairman, which is really his consigliere, Bonnie Hammer, who's been a woman at our company for so many decades. He has many women on his leadership team, including my boss, Lindy Yaccarino, um, who he, he values and trusts. And you can see it in his leadership and the way he brings her to the table. But I do think we need to keep the conversation going because it's often easy for people to bring someone up, lift someone up who they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. who's someone who's like them. And so if right now it's 487 men and, and, and only 13 women and none of them people of color, well, that's a challenge, right? That because no one is lifting anyone up. What is the most important skill that leaders need for the future of work? Authenticity and vulnerability. Top tip for a future sales executive. Collaboration is key. You can't know everything. One thing you'll commit to do in 2020 to help pay it forward. I am advocating for more people of color and really helping to bring them up. I just want to say, keep doing what you're doing, Allie. You're amazing. And I appreciate that you're always looking for the greatness in other people and finding ways to bring it out in every job that you do. It's a pleasure to work with you and I wish you all the best.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone should watch, watch every week. Uh, Laura, it's been a pleasure.